While he was in remand, he took a hostage, a civilian librarian. For his return, he wanted an inflatable doll, a helicopter, and a cup of tea. He allegedly released this librarian for farting in his presence. Apparently. <laughs> This man's a nut. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. This is crazy. Look at him. Yo. He, bro, he kidnapped a boy and then let him go because he farted. <laughs> he is supposedly the most feared man in prison, not the streets. He is the most feared man in prison. Not understanding how, but let's see. My name's Charles Brunson. In all my life, I've wanted to be famous. Charles Bronson is one of the most terrifying men to have ever walked this earth. Many tried and failed to control him, and the prison system was in no way equipped to deal with his violent mannerisms. Let's take a look at what may have led to this point. Charles Bronson, originally called Michael Gordon Peterson, was born on the 6th of December 1952 in Luton, Bedfordshire. Unlike many dangerous criminals, Bronson actually came from a stable home. His father ran a conservative club, which was a gentleman's club for Britain's upper class, and his mother appeared to be relatively normal. Bronson wasn't a bad kid at all. In fact, his relatives claimed that he was a very well-behaved child who was gentle and kind to others. You can say he was everyone's dream child. It appears that the trouble began during his teenage years after his family moved to Ellesmere Port, Cheshire. At the age of 13, he was allegedly part of a gang which would go around stealing and creating chaos. The gentle, kind boy somehow... Uh, see, that's one thing. You move, I mean, it seems small, um, knowing how the world is, like how you have to move and uh, just to fan better, do better and all that type of stuff, but listen. One move went from innocent, sweet kid, everybody's dream kid, to being 13 in a gang. ...disappeared, and his replacement was quick to fight and skip school, a place he had grown to hate. He eventually dropped out of school and returned to his hometown where he managed to find a job at Tesco. But within two weeks, he was fired for attacking his manager. After that, he had several other jobs, but these were all short-lived. The situation that led to his first imprisonment is quite insane. Get this, he had an argument with his girlfriend's father, and after that he was so enraged that he went outside and smashed several parked cars. Imagine if you just went to the store to buy some oranges, and when you came out, you found your windscreen smashed because someone had a disagreement with someone else. I'd be pretty mad. Anyway, <laughs> after this trial, he was given a fine and put on probation. I'm not sure whether the car owners received any compensation, though. Later on, Bronson managed to find a new job, this time as a furniture remover. However, he'd continually get into fights and was constantly involved in petty crimes. Then, eventually, not so petty crimes. Keep in mind that Bronson was still a teenager at this point. His next major incident involved crashing a... Dang, all, I'm not going to pause it too much, but look, all of those incidents be, while he was still a teenager? Whew. Stolen lorry into a car. This caused him to receive more fines and probation, which did nothing to change his behavior, because at 19, he was convicted for playing a huge role in a smash and grab raid. He met his future wife in 1971. Her name was Irene Kelsey, and she was totally enraptured by him. When questioned about her interest in him, she said he was so different from any other boys like I knew. Boys, he always man. wore tailored suits, had perfectly groomed sideburns, and a cockney accent. So fellas, if you don't know how to get the girls, wear some suits and work on that accent. The couple had a son in 1972 and divorced five years later. When Bronson was 22, he was involved in an armed robbery and was sent to Walton Jail for seven years. While he was there, he had to be sent to the punishment block for attacking two prisoners for no apparent reason. The next year, he was sent to Hull, where he refused to do any prison work. Apparently, he became so enraged once that he smashed up a workshop after having an argument with an officer. They had no choice but to send him to the punishment block, and I suppose that he was becoming used to this at this point. They had to inject him with a sedative, and they added six more months to his sentence. After that, he continued his violent behavior and was placed in solitary confinement for a while. It seems that nothing they tried could get him to change because when he was finally let out of solitary confinement, he attacked another prisoner with a glass jug. He was charged with grievous bodily harm, but after a while, the charges were dropped to unlawful wounding. Bronson would have to serve nine extra months for this violent action, and he was transferred yet again, this time to the armed- He's going from prison to prison causing straight chaos. And this, the, I don't know if it's the way he's built. It might be the way he's built. 
Or maybe it's that mustache. That mustache looked dangerous, though, you know? <laughs> it looked like he could, do, he could be up to no good with that mustache, for sure. Lee Jail. This was not going to be his last transfer. Between 1975 and 1977, he went from here to Wakefield, Parkhurst, and Walton prisons. He had developed a reputation for being so dangerous and unmanageable that he had to be transferred from Yorkshire to London while chained to the floor of a prison van. In the interest of prison guards and prisoners, Bronson had to be kept in solitary confinement. With no one to interact with or beat up, he decided to work on his fitness routine. But whenever he was let out of solitary confinement, he'd attack other prisoners or cause damage to the property of the prison. While he was at Wandsworth, he tried to poison the prisoner who was staying in the cell next to him. I mean, why don't you just put him in a 23 and 1 where he only come out like four or five days a week, no weekends or none of that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, or, or try, like, I mean, solitary ain't working because, so leave him there. You know what I'm saying? Because as soon as he come out, he gonna punch on somebody. That's crazy. At Parkhurst Prison, he became good friends with the Cray twins. Ronald and Reginald Cray were identical twin brothers who were well known for organized crime, murder, armed robbery, arson, protection, rackets, and assault. Yet Bronson described them as the two best guys he'd ever met. Birds of a feather, right? Unfortunately, he had to be separated from his two new friends because he threatened to murder a prison officer. So, he was sent back to Wandsworth, where he was caught trying to dig his way out of his cell. Apparently, another prisoner knew of his plans and snitched on him. When he was allowed to join the prison's population again, he found the snitch and brutally attacked him. At this point, there was nowhere else to transfer him, and the only institution which was willing to take him was the psychiatric wing at Parkhurst. He was transferred back to prison on the Isle of Wight, where he was charged for grievous bodily harm again. What did he do this time? He attacked a prisoner with a jam jar. There's just something about this guy and glass objects, I suppose. Afterwards, he attempted to commit suicide and attacked another officer. The result was another transfer. In 1978, he was sent to Broadmoor, a high security psychiatric hospital. I suppose they couldn't handle him there either. High security hospital of prison. If he ran through every prison, what you think he gonna do to the nut doctors? because he was quickly transferred to Rampton Secure Hospital. Bronson took it upon himself to strangle John White, a murderer and child rapist. His attempt was unsuccessful and caused him to be sent back to Broadmoor, where he was able to reconnect with one of the Cray twins. Perhaps irritated by his unsuccessful strangulation attempt at Broadmoor, he attempted again, but this time with a silk tie. Unfortunately for him, fate was on Gordon Robertson's side because the silk tie tore and prevented him from dying. The sec Our boy's so bad he can't even kill himself. <laughs> hey, yo, the devil's like, no, I still need you. <laughs> hey, oh my goodness. I hey, Lord. The second failed attempt caused Bronson to become depressed. A few years later, he managed to escape to the top of Broadmoor, where he staged a rooftop protest. He tore off the roof tiles in a rage. He did this a second time, and this resulted in 250,000 pounds of damage. His family eventually convinced him to stop. Bronson appeared to calm down a bit, and he focused on the arts. He wrote poems, stories, and even drew cartoons. This caused him to receive a few prison awards and probably caused the guards to heave a huge sigh of relief. You know, maybe it was finally over. Maybe he had decided to change his life, but they were wrong because he decided to strike another rooftop protest because he wanted to be transferred to a different prison. This strategy was, however, unsuccessful, so he decided to go on a hunger strike. He managed to starve himself for 18 days. He won and was transferred to Ashworth Hospital. He calmed down again for a while, then something caused him to snap. Mervyn Hawley, another patient in the institution, tried to make sexual advances towards Bronson, so... He is, wow, he survived 18 days with nothing? Bro, he is, forget the most feared man in prison, he is the feared most, he's one of the craziest people in the world. He used a sauce bottle to stab him. No means no. This you notice he never got out from a seven year sentence, like he just stayed in jail because he just keep beating the hell out of people, like, <laughs> Hey, this boy got seven years of dead life. <laughs> All this beating the hell out of people ain't killed nobody. How you get this? Oh, man, this is crazy.
This action not only caused him to get three years added to his sentence, but it also sent him straight back to prison. This time to Risley Remand Center, where he was quickly sent to isolation for punching another inmate. Sometime later that year, he was sent back to Walton, where he staged another rooftop protest. This one cost the prison about £100,000. How do you keep getting on the roof? One of them guards is scared as hell of him and just be like, you know what, go ahead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Another year was added to his sentence and he was transferred to Albany. There, he punched a prisoner on his first day and was sent to Wormwood Scrubs. It seemed like the transfers would never stop and that no one was equipped to deal with Bronson and his antics. In 1986, he was transferred eight times. He went from Winchester back to Wormwood Scrubs, where he strangled the governor, to Gartry. So, what did he do when he was finally free? After finishing his sentence, he was released from Gartry and almost immediately purchased a water pistol and used it to scare a stranger into driving him to Luton. He engaged in illegal <laughs> bare knuckle boxing for a while and then changed his name from Michael Peterson. Hey yo, bare knuckle boxing, he found his niche. He should have stayed in it. And to Charles Bronson. On New Year's Day in 1988, he robbed a jewelry shop and kept a ring to surprise his girlfriend, Alison. How romantic. A few days later, he was arrested during a morning jog and was sent back to Leicester Prison. He had a strong defense because the witnesses were terrified to testify against him. Unfortunately for him, the love of his life retracted her initial testimony and Bronson no longer had an alibi. He was transferred to Brixton and placed in a very secure unit. In June of 1988, he pleaded guilty and was given seven years. He continued his usual activities punching prisoners and attacking officers, and the transfers were numerous. At one point, he befriended some rodents which invaded his cell. At another prison, he ran riot with no clothes on while holding a spear he made out of a broken bottle and a broom handle. One day, he received a taste of his own medicine when two prisoners stabbed him in his back. In November of 1992, he was released and he enjoyed 53 days of freedom. He was arrested again because of a conspiracy to rob. According to him, his girlfriend Kellyanne and her lover were trying to set him up. The charges were dropped, but he had to get his revenge somehow. So he broke Kellyanne's lover's nose. He was fined 600 pounds for this and eventually arrested again for another conspiracy to rob. While he was in remand, he took a hostage, a civilian librarian. For his return, he wanted an inflatable doll, a helicopter, and a cup of tea. He allegedly released this librarian for farting in his presence. Apparently, <laughs> this man's a nut. Hey yo, hey yo, this is crazy. Look at him, yo. He, bro, he kidnapped a boy and then let him go because he farted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe I can't breathe. <laughs> this boy, he asked for first of all, I think his um <laughs> ransom was an inflated doll and a helicopter. <laughs> Ain't no way. <laughs> they should have never let Cuz out. He took a hostage, a civilian librarian. For his return, he wanted an inflatable doll, a helicopter, and a cup of tea. He allegedly released this librarian for farting in his presence. Apparently, this was just too disgusting for him to handle. He was later given an 80-year sentence. He spent some time in isolation. No shit like that in my life. Calm crying. Calm crying and sweating. <sighs> All right, I'm back. Relation then went a few months without reverting to his previous chaotic behavior, but that didn't last long because in 1944, on Easter Monday, he took the deputy governor, Adrian Wallace, as his hostage. The guards managed to control him and he was transferred to another prison. He was then returned to Wakefield where he was placed in the Hannibal cage. The madness continued later. In April of 1996, he took a doctor hostage. Later, he took two Iraqi hijackers as hostages in his cell. He forced these men to tickle his feet and to refer to him as general. After that, he told them that he wanted a plane to Libya. Two Uzi submachine guns, 5,000 rounds of ammunition and an axe. 
He let one of the hostages go, then asked for ice cream. Eventually, he released them all, but another seven years was added to his <laughs> sentence. He took several hostages later on. Robert Taylor, a doctor in 1996, Phil Danielson, an educator in 1999. Later, in 1999, law enforcement finally did what I think they always should have. They set up a special prison unit just for him, Robert Maudsley, and Reginald Wilson. In 2001, <laughs> he married a Bangladeshi divorcee. They made a whole prison for three nutballs named Fatima Reheman, who had begun writing him letters after she read about him and somehow fell in love. He converted to her faith of Islam and decided that he would like to be called Charles Ali Ahmed. They divorced after four years and he renounced the faith. He was later moved to Wakefield High Security Prison. In 2014, he attacked the prison governor. He decided to change his name to Charles Salvador and stated, the old me dried up. Bronson came alive in 1987. He died in 2014. He continued creating art, then proposed to actress Paula Williamson in 2017. She accepted, and they married in a prison chapel. This happy marriage didn't last for a very long time, as she was found dead in her home in 2019. Bronson has- She really married him? Like, what? what is it about this boy? He wrote an actor and she really married him? auctioned his art to raise money for a child with cerebral palsy, and in 2021, he was featured on the single Only Mad Men Crawl. A film about his life was released in 2009 and stars Tom Hardy. Right now, he is still incarcerated at HM Prison Woodhill. What a wild and interesting individual. We have more videos just like this one, so just click one on the screen for more. I don't understand. All right, so what I'm not understanding is you got to take him away from general like out of general pop like you can't allow him to go to the hole for uh, a few months and come out and beat the hell out of people i know they're in prison cool but what about y'all guards if y'all that, if that's why ain't y'all worried about them <laughs> like it's bad went from beating the hell out of everybody that came in his sight to to taking people hostage bro it's like after he took the first hostage he just continued and continued to just take people doctors why do you like if he has to come see a doctor the doctor should have been like you know what i need this man in cuffs i'll get his vitals with his with his with his hands behind his back or what you know what i'm saying or uh one hand or, or what is on like you know what i'm saying them little belts around your waist with the cuffs on what's up with those or have a guard in there <laughs> have a guard in there what you can't take both of us I mean, unless you knock him out and then knock me out and then close, like, but come on now. <laughs> like, I'm not, like, they allow him to do the most. Like, they should have just gave him that lethal injection, put that boy to sleep. He tried to kill himself twice and didn't succeed. I, I'm, 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 I'm stunned, for one. Uh, I'm wondering how could nobody whoop his ass. <laughs> he, he just beat everybody up. He was that brutal. Then he got stabbed. Some two people stabbed him. He ain't died from that. That just pissed him off. Whoever whoever snitched on him, he came straight out of there and beat him to pieces. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh dude is wild. <laughs> Yo. Can't believe it. We up out of here, man. Like this video, sub to the channel, Gun TV.